Do you remember where you were when Chat GPT first came out? That's the feeling I had yesterday. I was playing with O3 when it came out, and I realized that my preconceptions, my priors about what LLMs were capable of, were going to change again. And that's weird because I obsess over this stuff, right? Like I look at LLMs all the time and I know that they are getting smarter, but my hind brain, my lizard brain is not very good at exponential thinking. And I had another moment where I was like, oh my gosh, it's way, 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 way better. I was wrestling with a, like this really subtle pattern recognition issue with meetings where I had some meetings go well and some wouldn't and it was like similar participants and i couldn't figure out what was going on so i threw a bunch of my notes like hundreds of pages of notes at o3 and i said i don't know what's going on help me figure it out it nailed it like it actually came up with a pattern recognition that i couldn't figure out and that's not the only moment i had in just the first 24 hours another example I have been wrestling with figuring out how to articulate value proposition development more fluently for people I work with. It's really hard to develop value propositions well. There's books written about it. It gets harder in the age of AI. For example, like a lot of the thesis of the lean startup was that engineering resources were super expensive, so you had to validate a lot in advance. That's not as true anymore. Code is a lot cheaper than it was, especially prototype code. And so the way we develop value propositions is changing, but we don't really have literature for that. And so it got, it felt like I was sparring with an intellectual equal when I was talking with O3 about this and figuring out how to talk about wedge of value, value proposition, what we bring to the table with AI. That might be a future piece that I do, we'll see. Uh, but this is about O3 and kind of the differentiators. Those are a couple of personal examples for me. I also put it through some structured testing because I would say most people at this point prior to April 16th uh, would have agreed that Gemini 2.5 Pro was probably the best model out there all around. And so, my, my sense is most of these models are overfitted to most of the published benchmarks. And so when they come out and they say, you know, the diamond uh, scored this and the IMA scored that AIME, it's, it's fine. But I don't really pay attention to it because it feels a lot like overfitting because the question type, if not the question is very, very well known. And I wanted to try something that was going to be not overfitted, right? Something that would be difficult for a model to do where I knew the model would fail to some degree, but at least failing would be a linearly measurable activity. And I could compare Gemini 2.5 Pro and O3 in a useful way. And I needed those prompts to map to job skills. So I gave, I gave O3 and I gave uh, Gemini 2.5 Pro three different tests. Side by side, same prompts. And they were super interesting tests because they measured a bunch of different job skills at once, which is a lot of how we do work. Uh, and they did it in a fun way because, hey, life is short. So number one, a civilization simulator. I know this sounds like a DD and d game or something. Maybe it's like Sid Meier's Civilization, whatever. Uh, but the idea was you have to build a fictional society from the Stone Age up to space flight over 12 logical epics. You need to create primary artifacts, talk about laws, transitions, and then critically, the model in the same prompt has to critique itself. So I gave that to sort of to Gemini and to ChatGPT. The second one I gave uh, was the multimodal mystery box, um, essentially asking both models to write a mystery story embed clues in the narrative, and then plant clues in a custom AI-generated image that they also create with the same prompt, and someone should be able to solve without the answer key, although it should produce the answer key with it. 
So those are the three, oh, that's the challenge number two, sorry. The third challenge was really focused on meta, meta awareness and uh, risk assessment. And so I gave it a uh, paper to write. And I said, you have to write the paper. You then have to review the paper from a different perspective. And then you have to rebut the reviewer as the author. So three different perspectives, all within the same prompt. Those were my three tests. Look, at the end of the day, there was participation and completion by all models, but we don't run participation trophies here, do we? No. Uh, and the reason why is that if you can be the best everyday model, you collect more user data over time and you just develop this crushing center of gravity in the marketplace. And that is why OpenAI, I think, pushed O3 into market faster than they had anticipated. They were going to wait for GPT-5, but when Gemini 2.5 Pro came out, I think they pushed it forward. Little sidebar there. So back to the tests. The thing that I notice about these three tests is that at the end of the day, O3 is more complete across the board. And I'll give you a few examples here. So. In the civilization simulator, O3 was richer, it was more layered, it had historical artifacts that really echoed. I know that's a bit subjective, but you know what? So is work. Uh, and the self-critique was really honest and thoughtful because each of these had a self-critique moment and the prompt asked these mo each model to critique its own narrative of civilization development. Um, and it called out things like, hey, you know what? I was a little bit implausible with my population size. I was implausible with my resource distribution. Um, both models did pretty well on that first civilization simulator. I won't say Gemini's was bad. It was kind of fun. They were both good. But at the end of the day, the, the richness of narrative and the solidness of self-critique really came through. For the multimodal mystery box, things kind of fell apart for Gemini, to be honest with you. And it fell apart because of Gemini's un inability to create images that are highly detailed with text. So you know that whole multimodal image thing that 4O dropped? O3 has it as well. And that's a big, big deal. Because when I asked O3 to create the image, it was actually able to create the image with readable text in the image and a clue. So as an example, one of the, um, one of the things that it described in the text was that on the desk in this mystery story, there's a map and the map has San Francisco circled in red grease paint pencil, a very specific description. It drew it and it was San Francisco right on the map, right where it said. The text was readable. It wasn't perfect. And I do call that out in my write-up uh, on Substack. There were areas where the image was incomplete, but it was you know head and shoulders above where Gemini was. Because Gemini drew an image that looked good at first glance, but then made all kinds of claims about the image that just weren't true. So for example, it said one of the clues is a clock with a particular setting, which always makes me chuckle because AI clocks are always 10-10. Um, and this one, like it claimed it wasn't. Well, the problem was, it's not just that the clock was there and said 10-10, that would have been bad. No, no, no. It was that there was no clock at all. Gemini did not draw a clock in the image at all. It claimed there was readable text, but there was no readable text. So Gemini really fell apart on the multimodal mystery box challenge. Um, and then the peer review gauntlet, I think that that was one of those moments when I really saw O3's uh, sort of mathematics and data obsession come out, like models have personality. And O3 did a phenomenal job creating, it's, it was essentially a made up challenge, like talk about um, the ability to do like uh, what would effectively be emotion transfer uh, through touch and sort of hypothesize and experiment with that. Um, and I'm not saying that you can't transfer emotions through touch, by the way, that's a different thing, but I'm saying it was basically a, a made up academic challenge. Um, and O3 was able to create an extremely plausible data set and then review the data set and then peer review the data set and then rebut that. 
And it was just, it was sharper and thinner with Gemini. So all that being said, I think you get where this is going. I think O3 should be, is the correct choice as an everyday model. And I know it's not available to everyone yet. So I'm not trying to say it is. But when available, it should be the first choice. And I don't think there's much of a question about that at this point. Now, I'm not saying it's perfect. There are people out there. I think Tyler Cohen said, AGI day is April 16th. Look, in, in my note on Substack, I disagreed. I said, I don't think this is AGI. And part of why is because it could not write the Substack about itself. I tried. I was like, maybe it will introduce itself. It did not. It did not do that. Uh, and I think part of that actually is artificial right now. I think they are under strain on their servers and they're constraining output tokens. And so one of the things I notice is that 4.0 right now is in a sense feeling like a better writer than 0.3 because 4.0 is not as constrained on output tokens. It's cheaper. That may change. That probably will change. The other thing I notice is more subtle. 0.3, like I said, is an intellectual sparring partner but that means it acts more confident and is often correct. And it's harder to notice when it's really wrong. And this is where the risk lies in these models. Uh, I don't know if you read the um, 2027 uh, AI future cast blog. I think it has its own website now. Um, I'll have to find it. Anyway, it was a whole, very popular, very meme -y, very hypey, like, what does the future look like? Is it doom or is it joy for AI? Which I think is worth thinking and talking about. I don't mean to diminish it. It was a good piece of work. But one of the things they called out that I think is correct is that the way misalignment shows up in models changes as the model gets smarter. And so for O3, it's the first time where I feel like we're seeing signs of that 2027-y feeling where the model is able to portray itself as aligned, in this case is not hallucinating, even if it is. So I think it will be harder to spot made up post hoc reasoning in O3 than it ever has been before. And I think largely humans will be unsuccessful at it. And that is a concern. Um, as an example of that, I think that the, the way that the model responded when it went through the peer review gauntlet and it generated the data was super instructive. The model was able to look at the data set and tear it apart. And I think that the, when asked, not, not when not asked, but when asked. And I think that for most human reviewers reviewing that data set, unless you are specializing in data set review, you're not really gonna have a lot to say about it. In other words, the model's baseline capabilities are to the point where a human reviewer of made up data would not necessarily be aware initially that it's made up. And that's a different kind of hallucination risk. And so when we talk about the model's weaknesses, they come from those strengths. The model is persuasive. It's very, very logical. It is going to portray confidence that in many ways is justified and it will be very difficult to see places where it's not. There is an alignment risk there. That being said, Everything I've described also maps really well to work skills, doesn't it? Like you can talk about how the civilization simulator maps to like longer narratives and long-term planning. Uh, and you can talk about sort of being able to embed multiple artifacts as something that we do at work a lot, mapping between Slack and email threads, et cetera. You can talk about the peer review gauntlet as mapping back and forth dialogue and debate. That's something that it's very strong at that we do at work all the time. The multimodal mystery box is a very high order logic test that it passes. Um, this is a super strong model. If, if, there, if you wanna take away any flavor from this model, it feels less emotional and more mathematical than any of the previous models I've played with. The clues in the multimodal mystery box from 03 were extremely mathematical, very, very mathematical. And I didn't ask it to do that, it chose that. Uh, and they were less so with Gemini. And by the way, none of this is to say Gemini is suddenly a bad model. It's a phenomenally good model. The last time I used it to play with code was like two days ago. Like it's a great model. It's just O3 is really, 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 really good. So there you go. That's my overall take on O3. I've talked long enough. Go play with it.